How did people nearly 300 years ago renovate their homes? Hi everyone, Ken here. Welcome to this house. Today we are exploring a living piece of history. Make sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House. Let's go back in time to the origins of Peacefield. The oldest section of this house was constructed in 1731 by prominent plantation owner Leonard Vassell. Upon his death in 1737, it passed down through his family for 50 years before being purchased by John Adams, who was then in England serving as the U.S. Minister to the United Kingdom. When the Adams returned stateside in 1788, they found their new home to be somewhat less grand than they had anticipated. Abigail Adams was so dismayed by its lackluster appearance that she compared its craftsmanship to a wren's nest with the comfort of a military barracks. At this point, they endearingly named the estate the Old House, and unlike the previous owner, who ran a plantation, the Adams were morally opposed to forced labor and hired staff to manage the day-to-day -day operations of the farm and household. In the following years, while John Adams was away, serving as vice president and then as president, Abigail renovated the house to her liking. She expanded it significantly, building a massive addition below a gambrel roof and finishing out formal rooms where she could feel comfortable entertaining guests. As we head inside, let's keep in mind that this is not merely a house. It is a testament to a lineage that helped shape the America we know today. Entering the home, we will travel through Abigail's addition to the house, exploring the rooms from the long hall. First, we will stop by the parlor, well-proportioned with simple but elegant millwork to adorn the walls. The house is filled with original furnishings that hark back to the days of John and Abigail Adams. So much so, that even in this old black and white photo, we can see that not much has changed over the centuries. Even over the decades, the house appears to have stood still through time. In the study, we will pay special attention to John's law desk, where he perhaps wrote letters as a founding father. Of Abigail's more formal additions to the house, we will travel into the paneled room, clad with floor-to-ceiling mahogany. Next, we will round the corner into the dining room, where family portraits look out over the early American furnishings. On the opposite wall, an impressive but simple hearth is bordered by terracotta tiles boasting a three-dimensional floral motif. From here, we can head down to the kitchen, where the family's paid staff would have prepared their every meal. The family could also summon their maids to various rooms by use of an early call system, with each bell uniquely tuned to make a different sound depending on the room in which the family requested them. We can wind past the cellar in the basement, gaining a view of the mansion's hardy foundation, to find the laundry room equipped with running water and a stove. Let's go back upstairs and continue to the second floor, taking the original staircase from the old house, which Abigail had refinished. From the second floor stair hall, we can begin exploring the bedrooms. The guest room, considered luxurious and highly fashionable for its time, grants us a view into the lifestyles of the time. In addition to an ornately tiled fireplace, each and every photo is framed and suspended from a picture rail, ensuring no damage would be done to the plaster walls nor the wallpaper covering them. The family's traveling maid was treated to luxurious quarters with elegant, hand-carved furniture cozied up to a large window, fireplace, and even the later addition of a radiator. In the president's room, a canopy bed, shimmering in golden hues, acts as the visual anchor against floral wallpaper. There were several more bedrooms tucked away below the third floor's gambrel roof, but the house did not stop here. You could climb the incredibly steep staircase to the rooftop and look out over the fields, meadows, and gardens which composed the 60-acre estate. In the fullness of time, this home transitioned from a family residence into a symbol of national heritage. In 1927, it became a museum, preserving the Adams family's rich legacy before joining the National Park Service in 1946. Today, we're fortunate to have the opportunity to visit this historical gem. Which room was your favorite? Let me know down below in the comments section, and while you're there, Make sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House.